Hello, my name is uh, John Harrison. I work for Greaves and Hawks and I'm the creative director in the fashion retail industry. So as part of finding your future campaign, I'm really happy to partner with the DFN Foundation um, and NSEF to give you an insight into my career as a creative. I hope this short video will give you some tips, advice and inspiration on the pathway to employment. So without further ado, let's begin. And I've got some questions um, so I can give you some answers, hopefully. My job title, yeah, my job title is creative director and this is kind of what it says. I direct the creative elements of the business from the design, the look of the clothes, the windows, the marketing, the display and the global ranges in China. Um, my role, uh, my actual main role there, I suppose, is the starting the design process for the collections per season. We do autumn, winter seasons, spring, summer seasons and start with research and lots of sketching. Here's my sketchbook, which is full of doodles and ideas, uh, garments. Bits of fabric. When I was at college, we were taught to really use a sketchbook uh, to get your ideas down. It's quite free. There's no kind of rules. Um, and afterwards, it gives you a really good record of the ideas that you've done. I then work with the fabrics um, and the cloth mills to select the actual fabrics for the styles. These are the shirting fabrics that we'll maybe work in a mill in Italy. So we'll find the original one that we like and then we'll develop out new colours, uh, new patterns, different ways of um, changing the colours on it um, and then we'll also go to um, the uh, cloth show again in Italy um, where we take swatches of these this is from a Scottish mill um, and then we'll get the actual fabrics back through like this as big feelers of tweeds. This is very important to keep the brand mood and the feel of the brand um, and it's very important also to match the correct fabric to, um, to the actual garment have a look at your clothes now, you know, what are they made of? Are they wool? Are they cotton? Um, are they synthetic? Um, are they heavy? Are they light? Look at the label, see what they're constructed of. It's a very key element to the actual design process. Um, after that, I work with the design teams and bring the sketches to life. That's taking them from a simple drawing and a tech pack to a 3D piece of clothing that somebody can wear. And then after that, we work on marketing. I work on the marketing of the clothes from photo shoots on locations such as Iceland, um, or more simple studio shoots for like lookbooks um, and this is important to create an atmosphere and a mood and feeling for the clothing to place the clothes in a certain sort of aspect that gives the sort of them some life. Um, sometimes we do a newspaper um, for example this one here. So this is an example of the newspaper that we created at Geeves and Hawks. So it just gives explanations of the brand, picks out some of the icon marks like the crown um, and then we'll talk about tailoring details like wallets that we sell um, and then finally I work with the stores that sell the actual clothes so we work on the windows what the windows are telling the customers whether it's a Christmas window whether it's a, an Easter window and then the actual flow of the garments in the store so when a customer comes into the shop he can kind of find the pieces that he needs um, and you know you will see what in in each area of the store there are different types of clothing so for example we could have a suiting area we could have a trouser area and it makes it very easy for the guys to uh, to buy their clothes i think that my favorite part always is the the beginning uh, the researching and the museums when we're going to vintage shops and and researching the old pieces hard bits there are some hard bits in in this industry and in any jobs um, i try to work but through this by being open and discuss this with my fellow workers um, I am often find that the solution can be found and quite often it's a better solution than, than we actually have the beginning problem with. Um, we can sort of find a, an easier way um, and new things pop out. I think one of the hardest things for me is, is design is actually knowing when to stop. And design is kind of infinite and it's never ending and always evolving so it's very hard to say that you know when to finish this part of the collection but once that's done then we can move on and, and you have to sort of virtually draw a line and say that's in it that's it and enough's enough but that's a really tough part in design um, how to keep going it's very hard to keep going um, you know when when things are tough but I think one of the the biggest things I do is actually list things down I, I write things down um, I start to sort of make lists of things that I can sort of like evaluate and then look at and also, if you kind of write it down, it, it, it almost takes it out of your mind and, and puts it into some other place and it's not, it doesn't sit with you. Um, and when then when that's done, you can sort of start to analyse it and find out and focus on where the pro problems are. 
Um, I'm also not afraid of giving up on things actually and refocus, look at some another solution and sometimes it's best to ignore a big problem and move on to something else that solves it in another way. So don't always try to feel like you have to thrash one problem out. You can actually change it and move on to something else. Um, how did I get into the job? Um, I suppose at a very young age I always wanted to do design and got very interested in clothes. So I studied, I self-taught, I worked really hard actually in the areas that I loved. And to get my current job has been a long journey. You know, I'm nearly sort of 50 and I've had some great luck in my career, but mainly I've worked hard, um, been fair to colleagues along the way and tried to do the best I can. Um, even if I don't know it all myself, um, there are a lot of skilled people out there who can educate me along the way and they can sort of help a part of a team um, drive things forward. So I think as you start to work within different groups and teams of people, um, the actual sort of learning process becomes very good and mutual. You, you help other people and they help you as well. Um, in terms of training for the career, actually there was very little. It's very much um, an, an experience training. You learn by experience, day-to-day -day learning. Um, the fashion industry is always changing so I think flexibility is really good to keep things in mind um, and often it's more of a feeling, so you can be quite clever in your research as well. So you kind of self-train, um, for example, sort of music and film industry can influence the types of clothes that people are wearing. And then so if you study that, then it can sort of educate you to make better decisions on to new things. Um, and you can start to sort of find little sort of clues among that um, which help you. Um, hours. Is it is it a long type of journey within this? I think sometimes yes some parts of the seasonality of this this industry can make certain collections very very long um, so you can do sort of 50 hours plus of normal work but because of the nature of design you never really switch off um, so in a sense I feel like I do sort of 70 to 80 hours including weekends of thinking about this and then you try and relate it back to your work or your sort of ideas or a print so for example, even a trip to a garden centre can inspire you, you'll see something you like, and then it might make you start to think about a print. So then my mind is always thinking about, you know, oh, how would that print look on a shirt or how would it look on a trouser or something? And then, then it comes back to work and then you think, oh, well, I need that fabric. So it very rarely goes away. Um, it's quite uh, encompassing. It really sort of takes over quite a lot of your sort of thought process. Um, I think you also, along that journey, because you're meeting a lot of people, you do make good friends there. And I think it's important that you make friends at work. And, and I think quite often you spend an awful lot of time with people at work. And you can get some good friends, you can make some, uh, you get to know people really well. I think it's quite important that you, you sort of remember that, you know, there are people among that uh, working with you who have other lives outside their work. And it's quite nice to sort of get to know what they do and, and their lives as well as the working life. Um, my first job, um, I think my first job was probably helping my dad, in all honesty, going back a long time. Um, then I worked on a farm for many years. Um, and then finally I worked in a shop in Nottingham. Um, and after that, my first real job in fashion, like kind of my paid job, in a sense, was on Savile Row as a tailor. Um, and then after that, I didn't really do anything else apart from work in this industry. Um, it's not always been easy, but I never sort of varied off the sort of fashion really um, in um, fashion roles and things. Um, you've asked for a funny story. Um, there are hundreds of funny stories in, in this world and in this industry and some serious characters. Um, I think one of my favourite ones, which is mildly cruel, but it's quite amusing to me, was once in Hong Kong, we were doing a photo shoot um, in one of the shops and the uh, the filmographer, the filmmaker was quite concerned about his sort of looks of, of how it was going to look in the shot and he made us clear out the whole window so it was all clear in the background and suddenly he thought oh I've got a great idea and ran out the shop and actually ran straight into the window that he'd cleared out because he'd forgotten that actually he'd cleared it out and it was just a sheet glass of window and uh, he ended up on a pile on the floor which was mildly amusing. So that was quite a funny story but yeah there are thousands in the industry really. <laughs> Um, and getting there in terms of the sort of advice of what we, you know, learn throughout our careers. Um, 
I think the best advice or one of the best advices for me is that you've got to really, really want to do what you want to do. And, and it will really help you through the highs and lows of any job. Um, if you really, really sort of enjoy what you're doing and love what you're doing, it'll make the, the, the tough bits manageable and it'll make the, the best bits really, really exciting. Um, and you'll get a great sort of day-to-day -day learning experience um, and hopefully make it a better place for other people as well. Um, you have to remember also, you know, in terms of careers in fashion and retail, there are many, many arms to the industry. There's textiles, buying, design, which I do, tailoring, garment technology, the sustainability, quality control. So also look into those because you might find that if you're interested in the fashion and retail world, you might think, oh, I want to do design, but there are so many other great jobs within this. Um, and I think each one is worth pursuing and looking at before you think, oh, OK, I'm just going to do design. So that's about it. Um, many thanks for watching. I, I really hope some of these topics will help you consider this industry and hopefully follow Finding Your Future videos um, because there's some great insights among all the other various ones and various occupations. Thank you very much.